TNC Original African Stories. Listener discretion is advised as this podcast may contain violence or strong language. Previously on Ashoibi. Bami, she crashed a family function and embarrassed me in front of everybody. I mean, you were the first person I spoke to after I managed to escape that place, so you know. You know, I was so sure it was one of Charles's holes and... And what does that make you? Bami, what's that supposed to mean? Anita, you know how I feel about you. Heck, the world knows how I feel. And if I was unsure all these years, that slap on Valentine's Day told me in very clear words how you feel about me. And the moment I tried to move on, you strut in on your I know what's best for Bami horse to what? To what did you say again? Forbid, was it? To forbid me from seeing the girl that felt threatened by you and was proactive about it? Dr. Anita. Mr. Avazi. I'm a man of my words. I told you on Monday, I'll be here every single day of the week. Every single day. Meet me at the Palms in an hour. Cafe Vegnano. And don't even keep me waiting. Let's go. Mo, uh-uh. what are you doing here? Mr. Jayola Gbadebo. You married me, didn't you? Now I am ordering you to stand up and fucking leave. Hey, our country people, welcome back. The air in Cafe Vergnano is still agog to propagate some more drama. One afternoon's worth of drama is obviously not enough to satisfy its customers. In the midst of the murmured questions and buzz, Anita decides to attempt to blend back in. Anita walked calmly towards the table she shared with Laddie in the last hour. He guided her every move with his eyes and was amazed at her composure. If he had not witnessed the fast-paced display of the last few minutes, nothing about her calm demeanor would have given it away. She pulled out the chair, sat, and smiled to hide her embarrassment. So, that's not something you get to see every day. I know, right? Trust me, I'm the dramatic one, and even I have not pulled something like this. I'm just really worried about her. She's been all over the place lately. He leaned across the table, his chest resting on his arms, and asked quietly, Hmm. Are you all right? Do you want me to sneak you out of here? Because the eyes, the eyes in this place look like they are waiting for you to give an explanation. She moved her head closer to his. (laughs) I can feel them piercing through my back. Legotians. She sat up, her back barely touching the rest, and said, Let's just sit here and frustrate them. Besides, you've turned out to be better company than I imagined. Ooh, I haven't done nothing but sit here and listen to you pick both our brains. I have to say, though, you're not as paranoid as the woman that almost beat off my head when I brought my sister-in-law to her. Well, you're not the douche husband that was hitting on his wife's doctor. She shrugged. He stared at her with admiration and widened the smile that had grown comfortably on his face since this afternoon began. I'm really sorry to bring this up again, but your friend, is she married to the guy? He had sensed that she was a temperamental woman and he had hoped that this question would not tip her over the edge. Aha! I was just waiting for you to ask. I knew you wanted the gist. Just look at you. (laughs) (laughs) Married for eight years now. Perfect fit, the pair of them. Her eyes wandered into nothingness as her mind began to search for possible explanations for her friend's outburst. So, is that something they do to spice up their marriage or... I don't don't get. Mo doesn't lash out. In fact, I never thought she knew how to. It's the guy's fault. A man ought to handle his wife so well, so much that she, she knows not to air their dirty laundry in public, no matter what. He took a gob from his cup of coffee, watching her from above the white ceramic rim. Anita's forehead creased and she wondered what he insinuated. She opened her mouth to challenge him, but she bit her tongue again in the resolve to pick her battles. She nodded and finished up her bottle of water. Laddie glanced at his watch and gave an exaggerated sigh. (sighs) Big time's over. Uh, I need to get back to the office to prepare for a meeting. She took a quick glance at her watch and sulked a little inside. Say we go out to get a proper meal tomorrow. Is there anybody that would potentially cause a scene and perhaps orchestrate my death? He asked as he dialed his number with her phone. (laughs) Uh 
So what did you mean when you said a man ought to handle his woman well? He looked at her with surprise and laughed. <laughs> and the paranoid doctor is back. The smile on her face faded and she stared at him, waiting for him to diffuse the ticking bomb. Uh, it's all about discipline. Most women are highly emotional, hence, I'm sorry, irrational. She raised her eyebrows and folded her arms underneath her breasts, pushing them up. All I'm saying is, just as a woman should not encourage abuse and disrespect from her man, a man should not give her reason to act irrationally. Discipline and effective pre-damage control, very important. He smiled. You and I will get along very well. She nodded as she got to her feet. I'll see you tomorrow then. Although there were two adults in the bedroom, it seemed like the air conditioner was doing all the talking and breathing. In those moments after Mohini slammed the door behind her and laid on the bed, her back to Jayola. Can we talk about this, please? Mohini rolled her eyes and shut them, attempting to calm her racing heart. She jerked when she felt Jayola's hand on her ankle and turned sharply, giving him a clear view of the red anger clouding in her eyes. Talk about what? You are a cheat. You got caught. End of story. Ha. You think I'm cheating on you, Mo? He was now standing by her side of the bed, his hands locked behind him. She shot him a look that told him to ensure a safe distance between them. Unbelievable. That woman is Mrs. Angela Kalejaye. She stared at him and narrowed her eyes. So, you talk to her at odd hours, and I've caught both of you together on days when you were supposed to be at one meeting or another. All that is okay, because she is Mrs. Kalejaye. Babe. She needed my help. Really? They were deep in financial crisis and her husband's ego would not let him come to me. So she went behind him to ask for my help. He squatted beside her. Jayola Gbadebo, please, don't even lie to me right now. Don't. I know what I know. Now be a man and accept it. <laughs> you were helping her financially. Hey, that's why you lied to me about who you were speaking to the other night, Abi. Jay, you tell me everything. So if this help was genuine, I would have known about it. So don't even try to make me feel stupid. She got off the bed and walked past him towards the bathroom. He grabbed her arm. What have you done with my wife? Because this woman that has been walking around this house this past month is definitely not my Moini. How dare you conclude that I would disrespect you to the extent of cheating on you, repeatedly and in public with the same woman? And that stupid stunt you pulled this afternoon. My God, what were you thinking? She struggled to free herself from his grip. Please, shut up! She yelled in his face with her weight resting on the tip of her toes. Shut the hell up and listen to yourself, please. Jayola, I basically gave up my life for you. And you can't even look me in the eyes and admit that you've messed up. His right hand was twitching now, and he could feel the anger that he had worked hard to suppress rise to his stomach and travel to his hand. He scanned the room for the keys to his car, snatched them off the vanity table, and almost pushed her to the ground as he stormed out of the bedroom and down the stairs. Without hesitating, she rushed behind him, running to catch up with the wide stride his long, sturdy legs afforded him. Yes! Run away! Just keep running! Shabi, you leave here. When you're done running and lying, you will come back to face me, and then you will tell me the truth. I'm not stupid, okay? She yelled at him as he walked through the sitting room in front of her brother and out the house. She stood, her chest heaving rhythmically, staring at the door and fighting the hot tears threatening to boil over. Jay pointed the back of the remote to the television and turned off its volume before standing to wrap her petite body in his embrace. He swayed from side to side until her body vibrated in response to the river of tears causing down her face. Don't cry, it's okay, it's all right. He soothed while his hand stroked her hair. My world is falling apart, Jay. She managed to articulate amidst sobs. He guided her to the sofa and she lay down with her head resting on his laps. He found her calf and tickled it lightly with his fingers. She screeched and jumped up, managing a weak laugh. <laughs> ah, that never gets old. He smiled, motioning her to take her place next to him. Jay, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't want anybody putting ideas in my head and making me doubt my decision. So I just kept quiet about it. 
In the third year of our marriage, G started talking about us moving back home and I wasn't entirely excited. But at the time, apart from school, there was nothing tying me to London as such. My graduation was only a couple of months away and I had not heard back from the places I applied to. So I warmed up to the idea of moving back home with him. I couldn't imagine living miles away from him. You know now, Jay. I got the shell job. She looked away from him. I got the job, but I turned it down. I was certain that after our move, I would get something here. I don't know what I was thinking. And as soon as we moved into this house, he came up with one excuse or the other until he finally came out and said he didn't want me to work. She turned to find him listening intently. Jay, I'm unhappy. Jay, I'm so unhappy. She shook her head vigorously. I've been unhappy for a really long time. Jay, for some reason, the moment I discovered he wasn't going to let me work, I calculated that if children came into our lives, I would stay a housewife forever. Plus, I was so sure that at some point it would yield to my whining, and I didn't want anything to jeopardize my opportunity when it came. So, so I went to Anita, and, and she puts in this IUD thing. His furrowed eyebrows told her that she had lost him. It's some contraption that, that basically prevents pregnancy. <laughs> Over the years, I've contemplated taking it out and starting a family with Jay. But something happens, and then I change my mind. He really wants children. I see it every time I look at him. <laughs> oh, Jay. I've told that man so many lies that I can't even keep track anymore. He's a good man, and I want to believe him, eh? But I've been difficult, and he has every reason to cheat on me, Jay. He has never walked out on me before. Never. I'm just a horrible person. He took her hand and squeezed it lightly. Mo, Mo. Listen, we've all done things that we're not proud of. But the most important thing is that we are willing to seek forgiveness and lead better lives. I'll talk to him when he gets back. But I don't want you to give up. Don't give up on this marriage. It is salvageable and I assure you that once you look through this, your marriage will be stronger than you can ever imagine. He wiped her face with his hand and she hugged him tight. Anita looked at the caller ID and finally decided to pick up the call. She activated the phone speaker before placing it on the kitchen slab as she busied herself with the peppers she was dicing. Are you home? She could hear fear laced with frustration in his voice. Jay, are you okay? Mo's not picking up her phone. We had a fight and I really need to talk to you. Jay, are you cheating on her? He sighed and replied defeatedly. Anita, no. No. I have never and I will not cheat on Mo. You know it. And I thought she did too. I really don't understand what's going on with her. We need to talk. Can I come to yours? Or are you at the hospital? I'm home. Night shift. I'm on my way. Jay, I don't know how I feel about you coming here. Mo might want to come here to talk to me. And if she meets you here, I'll be in trouble. She's not completely over our history yet. And I doubt she ever will be. And I don't want to give her something else to be upset or suspicious about. Anita, look, I'll see you in a few minutes. Babe, please pick up. I didn't know where my phone was. Sorry, Jerry. That's fine. How are you? I feel like shit. If Jay wasn't here, I'll probably still be feeling like constipation shit. Well, you're making jokes, so that's good. I'm sorry for shutting you out. Look, I didn't feel like talking about it, and I felt like Abuja was going to help, but... Did you come back earlier to surprise me or something? The story is long. I'll come to yours first thing tomorrow. I'm waiting for Jay to come upstairs. He's been talking to Jay since he got back. I was quite scared when he walked out today. Babes, Jay adores you. You know that, right? Please, just listen to whatever it is he has to say. I find it hard to believe that he would cheat on you. Even the best of us will sleep. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Give me courage, Mr. Berg. I need it. Mm. I've missed you, B. There's gist, though. Man gist. Hey, whoa. So I've been the one cock blocking you. Damn. Tomorrow morning, I will be at your door. 
Can't wait. You'll be fine, okay, babe? I'll be fine. I will. Don't worry. I'll be fine. Mo sat up when she heard Dayola's familiar footsteps heading up the stairs. All she wanted to do was hug him in silence and cry out what was left of the tears in her tear glands. She wanted him to look into her eyes again and reassure her that he had never and will never seek satisfaction with another woman that was not her. She now felt lighter than she had felt in months. She stood up, walked towards the door, and stopped when she heard him approach the door. He stood outside the room, staring at her, before he entered and gently shut the door behind him. That was when she saw the look of pure disgust on his face. His back to the door, he continued to stare at her, his eyes searching hers. He was silent and her heart began to race in response. Then all of a sudden, he spoke. Eight years, Mo. For eight long years, you have made me stay up worrying and praying for us to get pregnant. Eight years. Oh, shit. He nodded and slowly made his way to the bed. Mo felt like she had been shot. You know how much I wanted a child. You know. And yet you kept this from me. His voice was cool as ice. I have to give it to you, though. Very smooth. Well done. You really are a deceit personified. Mo continued to stare at the space he had occupied at the door. Her mouth open, her mind blank, and her heart racing as she watched all hope of redemption for her marriage slowly fall to the floor and shatter in a million sharp, ugly pieces. Thanks for listening to Ashray B, the podcast. Brought to you by The Naked Convos. Produced by 808 Extra. Theme song, Charles Onwubia, a.k.a. Beethoven. Narrated by Feifei. Voice actors, Eniola Keshiro as Moini. Charles Onwubia as Jay. Jasper Tomomewo as Jayola. Charles Onwubia as Ladi. Jojo Aimeegbe as Dr. Anita. This podcast is available everywhere you listen to podcasts on. Don't forget to subscribe and share.